Welcome to my weekly routine. You know what I usually do on the weekend? Uh, my, so my Saturday routine is I'll feed, you know, I'll give the skinks, I'll give the skinks some mescaline greens and some banana. And, sorry, just all the rustling. So that'll be for Sav, the blue tongue, and the two Cunningham skinks. I'll get this little concoction. And this is, to be honest, this, this series, this vlog, this episode, is just about my weekly routine. So I'm going to show you what I do every day with my calls and you'll see how vigorous or non-vigorous it really is. They'll get some banana. They love banana. My skinks. That's the thing I love, eh? I've said this multiple times, but I cannot reiterate it anymore or put any more emphasis on how easy large skink species are with regards to diet. Like, especially these guys, they're not like huge, huge fans of insects, which is weird. They don't really chase crickets and locusts around their enclosure. They like silkworms. They do like mealworms, but they have to really be in the mood for them. But you know what they'll have every single time? They'll have mescaline greens, they'll have banana, they'll have um, some berry. I've given them like raw meat, raw mints. But it's like few far between. So anyway, that's what they'll get today. Pretty chill. Five of vitamins, I'll eat the rest. Oh, so this is my naughty boy, my escape artist. He's either biting me or trying to escape or just being a little rascal, really. I would call him something else, but I can't for the camera. But anyway, gives me grief. Off you go. He is a lot bigger than the other one, which is fair enough, but still. Like I've given you some food. Yep. Already being naughty. You know what else I do today? I change, or sorry, I give them brows. Go check this. Ooh, little green gecko around. So I'll give them some fresh brows to add, because obviously this stuff hasn't grown in yet. To be honest, I think I actually made a mistake with what I planted in here. I didn't plant things that would get really, really dense. It's what New Zealand geckos want in their environment, so I have to kind of top it up with brows, but that's fine. Brows looks good. Gives them lots to climb in, and this is essentially what I want to replicate. Something where they can get right to the top, dense, Easy for them to hunt, catch flies, catch moths, things like that. Things, things that are sitting in all this dense bush. And then of course, can't leave it without a mist. So misting daily, twice a day at least, three times in the summer. At some point I'll get sprinklers, a sprinkler set up. Just get it automated so I don't have to do this manually, save myself some time. I'll give it a good sprinkle on the fresh brows. It's where they get all the extra dew from. Like it's warm, it's not super sunny yet, but it is warm. Just pulls down now in here this is the first time you're watching my video i've got northern green geckos with raw kawa geckos which are both endemic species in new zealand right on to the next one and everything that i cut is in my garden oh there's godzilla oh yeah he's bleed so everything that i cut is from my garden it's good so it's all native and in here i've got new zealand green geckos or northern green geckos and forest geckos oh man i have to show you guys that is epic Watch this. So he's come out for a bask. Look at that. Look at that colouring. Look at that. Beautiful species. Yeah. Like, look at them. Look at that colouring. He's on Prosky. Come out for some sun. Absolutely gorgeous animal, man. Like these guys have the craziest colourings, man. Yeah, and they keep the northern green geckos all split up because Godzilla's a lot older, a lot bigger. And the other guys are juvies and a little bit younger. Um, and obviously, I can't keep. Basically, in a nutshell, you can't keep brown species of gecko together because they will potentially inter interbreed, right? And then you don't want these hybrid geckos, especially in New Zealand, when we're trying to keep these guys, uh, I suppose, protected. And you don't want all these hybrid species running around because then you'll lose the original genetic chain or chain or train or no chain. So, yeah, you can't keep green, uh, the species of green together and they don't exist together in this part of the, like, in the country. So, that's why it's more important. You know, they would never encounter each other in the wild, so you shouldn't do it when you're keeping them. Sorry, I'm just trying to make this like all fit, but also look dense and also look epic for them to climb around. But as much as I can, you might be thinking I'm overdoing it, but I'm not. New Zealand geckos love dense shrub. They thrive in dense shrub. So if anything, I've gone light. And once again, I forget the very important mist. Oh man. So this is what I do every um, third day, usually. Uh, with replacing brows, misting every day, replacing brows every third or fourth day. It just depends on the brows. It still looks good. Sometimes it dries out really quickly, and some 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 native trees do a lot better, meaning that they last a lot longer as off cuts. But otherwise, down the bottom, yeah, that's nice. All right, that's the native done for today. Later on, basically, I'll probably get them some flies, but we'll get to that. The other thing I do today, I'll do today, is I'll give the crickets some carrot. 
food, fresh food every day. Whether I add some greens or some fresh dog food. Or today I'm gonna do, like this morning for example, I've just chopped up some carrot. Oh, oh man, it's annoying, eh? Because you gotta be you gotta take out any molding food. And this is the thing, some of it just molds so quickly. I literally put this in the other day. It's dog food that needs to go. So annoying. But you gotta do it, man. So I put this carrot in and yeah, fresh, like I said, fresh food every day. Whether it's a couple pieces of carrot, whether it's new dog food, um, could be slice of apple i don't like using apple apple like goes brown and molds really really quickly but this stuff is um all oh, these guys might need some dog food yep they do i've eaten it all look empty so what i do is at the end of like my dog bag sorry my dog's dog food bag i would just like leave it until there's like the crumbs at the bottom and that's it really good quality dog food as well so i just get some of the crumbs this is like these are babies as well these are tiny these little pinheads there we go that Crickets are voracious, so you have to feed them every day, like fresh food. Otherwise, they start eating each other. So I, I think I've decided I'm not gonna breed anymore. I think I'm just gonna go to the. I know I complained about this. Oh yeah, see, apple got to go. I know I complained about this, and you know, in my last episode, I was like, oh, maybe I will eat cricket. Uh, maybe I will breed crickets and keep them and keep the generations going. It wasn't that hard. Yeah, it wasn't hard, but also it's a lot of my time just doing this, just making sure that they're growing, they're not eating, eating each other. It's still time. So no matter what someone tells you, it's still a lot of time. It's still a lot of time. Um, I don't know. I'll see. I'm still like all over the place, right? I keep changing my mind every week. Yeah. So we'll see. I think the bottom guys will just get some dog food today. Yeah, so I'm still not sure, still undecided. I think if I separate them all out and count them, then that will change my mind. Because if I know how many, exactly how many I have, then I'll kind of be able to, it'll give me an indication of how, how many future animals or how many future crickets I can get. Because if I only have like, let's say hypothetically, I only have like 100 babies. Then I'm like, oh, well, 25 got me this many essentially. And I didn't feed out any of my 25 adult crickets. I just let them all die out basically until they all you know, finish laying eggs. I think I fed out the last one because the last one was a male and he's, you know, might as well feed him out to a leopard gecko, which I did. That's all crumbs, crummy. So yeah, we'll see. I'm still, I'm still thinking about it. Stay tuned. It's one of those things. I'm like, do I want to do it? Do I want to do another round? You know, another round of adults. I do like 50 instead of 25 adults or maybe put aside a hundred adults. We'll see. Maybe I'll put aside a hundred adults, like sorry, a hundred crickets. And let's see how many like leftovers I have, and then I'll be able to make a more a more sensible decision, or a mm, yeah, a more advised decision, I suppose. All right, that's these guys done. Actually, I almost forgot. I almost forgot my fish tank. So once a week, I do a water change, um, and usually every three weeks, I'll do like a full filter replacement, cartridge replacement, um, and then I'll do like a water change. But this is one of those ten percent, twenty percent water changes days now. I usually get a toothbrush and get the algae off, but I've got a bit of algae, so I'm just gonna go on with my rag. If you've seen my other videos, oh, this is a nano tank that I started with, and I've still got the same fish. And they're going good, man. Like, what have I got? I've got one pea puffer, I've got two bumblebee gobies, I've got two coolie loach, and I've got a hill stream loach. And that's it, all nano fish. I mean, the coolie loach will get bigger, and when they do get bigger, I and planning to expand. So what I'll do is I will, 10% is usually about five scoops of these. It's like between 10 and 20%. I'll get a bigger tank. Um, and to be fair, in my future home, my next home, where I can build a built for purpose reptile space or a reptile room or whatever you want to call it, animal room, I'm gonna have two fish tanks. Because you know what I've always wanted? Um, and I used to have when I was, years ago when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I had all these fish tanks in my room. I wanna get eels like tire track eels, fire eels, probably tire track eels. Love those suckers, man. Love eels, like tropical fish eels. So I definitely want to tank with tire track eels and what else can go with them that can be compatible. And then I'll just have a, a larger, we'll call it a nano fish tank. So I'll have like a school of bumblebee goby. Um, I'll probably get some figure eight puffers. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. It's only if they're compatible, right? If they can live together. All right, that's easy 20%. Now, Controversial, but I don't actually treat my tap water when I put it back in, and I've never had an issue, not once. We've got good water in Christchurch, um, from what I hear, in this part of the world. Like, comes from the ground, um, although, don't quote me on this, I could be wrong, and even if I am wrong, I, I still do this. I mean, what I would say to a beginner is, yep, 100%, definitely treat your tap water, especially if you're not sure about the quality of your tap water, and you get those water conditioners from pet shops. 
but I don't. And I never have. And my fish and plants are doing just fine. Now this is a really, I'm just doing a really quick and dirty uh, clean for you guys. What I would normally do is, is give, I mean they'll be next weekend I think, or maybe this week, I'll get in with my toothbrush and a little like green scrub them and I'll get all that or as much algae off of it as it could. You know I got a couple, I got a mystery snail and two ramchorns and I thought they'd do a good job but honestly they're bloody useless. In regards to the algae, they're great for the ecosystem but they couldn't clean algae to save themselves. But uh, yeah, I know, it's not, it's not just up to them. If you want like algae free water, like all types of algae, whether it's stringy algae, whether it's algae that sticks to the wall, whether it's brown algae, you need like the perfect water parameters um, and ideally like a CO2 tube. But this is a nano tank, I'm doing that shit. Maybe, um, maybe later, later on when I have more time. But yeah, these guys are doing really well, man. Little cute too, he's still cute. And, and this thing, my, um, my partner, was never really into fish, and she loves these guys now. She loves the puffer, he's really inquisitive. It's gonna be a bit murky. Oh, and just get out any excess plants that didn't need to be there, trimmings. I have to get the worm dispensary. That's it, um. So they call me the fly wrangler. Look at this. It's for the geckos and the frogs. No, I'm just kidding, not fly wrangler, but a little bumblebee. Now it's one of those, little... oh, jeez. Oh, here we go. Right. Let's do the geckos first. Actually, uh, sounds barbaric, but I, Remove seeds for some of their wings so that they're easier to tackle. They're in, I'll need more. Right, let's do the, the frogs next. And last thing we do is finish the day off with another mist. Here we go, here they are climbing around, enjoying their new crib. That's it. There he is, look at that. Just see him through there. Look at his big gut. Honestly, oh lays eating a couple flies I reckon. And these guys get a mist as well. That's one of my greens. We're running away from the mist, but they're also thirsty. God, he's so quick, let him. There he goes. Enjoying his new fresh brows. You know what I do on these days? This is Sunday, so I gave them mescaline greens and banana yesterday, but the skinks kind of pecked at it. So I was thinking today I'll do a um, scrambled egg day. So I'll just give them one scrambled egg and then that way maybe Sav, Blue Tongue will get involved as well. I just want to see what they'll eat today. They've had a lot of greens and fruit lately. They probably need a bit of protein in their life. And I thought I'd just do just one egg. Plenty for them, eh? I mean, usually I get to it and if they have any scrambled egg, they never eat the whole thing. So I'll just do a quick dirty scramble. Give them the protein. A week for the day. This is Sunday. Day two, I'm kind of working it backwards. Normally you'd start Monday to Sunday and Monday would be day one, but I'm going Saturday was day one, Sunday is day two, and then we'll go so on and so forth. But this is it. Oh, oh Jesus, yeah. Honestly, I am like Chef Ramsay on the pan. Hopefully they eat this man. I mean, not even them, I don't mind the skinks. The skinks will eat anything in regards to, they'll eat their greens, they'll eat their fruit. This is more for the blue tongue to see if she'll dabble. Now I actually don't scramble it fully, I leave it a little bit raw because I kind of want to have it a little bit runny. So it kind of replicates them almost having a raw egg in the wild. Now they will not. I, I've tried raw eggs, like I've cracked a whole egg into their dish and I've got nothing. But uh, you know, who knows? Maybe one day I'll try again. Oh, I mean I'll definitely try again. Maybe like quail eggs, something smaller. But let's see how this goes. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Right. So I'm going to put that there, out of the sun, see how we go. I'm just going to grow these out, feed them out, and that's how I'm just going to make traps for them in the wild and try to get them over the summer and then just buy them when I need them. I'm making this decision because they're too much work. They just are. I've come to the conclusion, I'm like, yeah, there was some ROI on it, which I did like initially, but I just, I have to manage these guys more than I do my actual animals, and that doesn't make sense. Not right now anyway. Maybe one day when I'm retired, I'll get back into bug breeding because I actually do enjoy the process of it and seeing all the results come through from, you know, the adults laying their eggs, doing their life cycle, then they die off. And then you've got all these hundreds of babies coming through, but it just makes no sense right now. I have to like tend to them every single day and I don't even have to tend to my animals, even my other animals that I actually bred these for every single day. So that's where I'm at. All right, hang on, I need to fix that because it's going to do my head in. So these guys, um, and this is the thing with, you know, you know what they say about interspecies or, you know, big skinks? Am I, I've got blue tongues and cutting skinks together, and you know what? They do just fine, the cutting skinks and the blue tongues, but I don't recommend that for everyone, not for beginners anyway. So 
I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm basically gonna break down and put these guys all together in one enclosure not all of them it's gonna go from like seven tubs to about three so I'll have like the big guys in one which I'll feed out pretty soon then I'll have like the medium and then the small and that's it three tubs no longer the breeder feeder but that is still a strategy I would apply in the future and I would use and still recommend using so definitely oh there's heaps and heads in that one okay so i'm gonna keep this one because this one oh my god this is a problem there's so many how do i get them out so many in this um still in this like soil bit of soil so i'm gonna have to get the headlamp on guys i know what you're thinking yeah that's gonna help give me more visibility so i'm gonna probably get them out out of here yep and into the main batch that's it i don't mind if i get like some soil in there as well actually you know what Got a better idea so i'm consolidating these all into one here we go all right you you i don't mind if i get some cocoa fiber in the actual bin itself the purpose of this is to get them all in here oh man they're still hatching out they're still like in heads that's okay it's okay it's okay i'm here for it but it'll also give me a good idea on like numbers as well how many i have in here i suppose i don't want okay that's good don't take me too long I don't think I have that many in here. Like, I'm not going to be here for hours. But yeah, that's the thing, eh? That's the decisions you have to make, man. When this isn't your full-time gig, and you've got other things going on in your life, and other responsibilities, and you still have to work and dedicate time to being elsewhere, 40 hours a week, then you got to be smart with your time. But for me, it just doesn't make sense right now, dedicating all this time to breeding crickets, when I can, oh, wow. These guys, why are these guys buried? These are chunky, man. A chunky little monkey like i said i don't mind if i get some of the soil i just don't want yeah so you gotta pick your battles essentially pick your battles pick your investments pick your time and i already have a lot of animals so for me i'm like man i can't oh here we go yeah we're getting some there's some numbers in here man i can't dedicate all that time to these guys when i need to and part of it stemmed from actually you know i kind of noticed because i was dedicating so much time to my crickets every day i was taking that away from some of my other animals that probably need some attention especially lately uh and the ones i want to talk to you about is a tree frog so their enclosure's an absolute mess like shit's growing it through the roof i mean in a good way but i need to trim it back because they've lost their basking branches because it's all covered in vines i mean it looks amazing but it's not good for them because they've lost almost like getting suffocated in their enclosure i mean it looks dope don't get me wrong like there's a one-on-one how to build a terrarium a bioactive terrarium and it growing out looking absolutely sick and yeah i'm gonna lie i'm good at that but is it best for the tree frogs no they i mean they love dense bush but they also need areas to jump and climb and the vines are just overtaking everything and i'll show you what i mean as you can see here right look at that it's crazy it's coming through the roof it's coming through like the sides it's going like everywhere and if you took if you look at it like six months ago man half of that was not covered at all half of it was just uh you know half the like terrarium the exoterra was actually like bare and i'm not lying i'm proud of it i'm proud of it like, i've done a good job with it i suppose looked after it you know i've got the good i've got a good lighting system the misting definitely helps are you guys eating or are you guys mucking around so i just mucking around man made us some scrambled eggs and you know what i'm grateful i love digging eh? what i can do is and what i will do is i'm going to leave that oh here's one so i think i've got as many as i can but i'll leave that there for now because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start transferring because i can't dig around forever so what i'll do is i'll transfer these guys in this bin into here that's one consolidation that i'm gonna do oh yeah boy i got some good numbers in here man look at this oh no i'll get rid of the paper towels first the idea of the paper towel is i can just pick it up and kind of do that Woo. actually kind of helps with um getting rid of some of the old food because it sticks to the old paper towels oh my god why is there an earwig in here what the fudge sickles man that's get the down here you can go in there Let's just put them into terrarium i'll deal with them later an empty one i'll feed him out i hate airwigs man he had no business being there man right look at this eee, look at them all first second and third generation honestly they grow so fast yeah that's a that's a flavor now the easiest thing to do right with this is go like this put them all in that end and then just pour them all in there we go look at that easy peasy lemon squeezy now they're all in here they get a little water dish they get some actually i've got some kiwi fruit so they get a bit of kiwi fruit to give them some little Next, so they've got dog food. They've still got some masculine, uh, masculine leaves left over. Some carrot, cute fruit, nice. So I'm going to talk about this thing in a second. These bins, they're sick, easy to use. Right, I'm going to put the old tray in here because it'll be easy to see in a clear or not a black but bin what's hatching, what's still hatching, what's still yet to hatch, or what's actually hidden in that enclosure. I'm thinking I might leave these little guys as they are. 
this is a tub this was going to be like future um feeders but it might be easier to do actually just put them in another bin i need to look at this bin so i need to now get them out of a black bin and consolidate them into a big bin and maybe i'll put them in here actually oh no no i gotta keep that separate i definitely gotta keep that separate you guys can sit here for now god lives everywhere man all right i need to empty this black bin and keep this black bin free this is one of my free bins what am i gonna do these guys are like first second third generation similar to these guys so maybe they all need to go in together i think so i have no idea how many i have now so take out the old water dish they've got enough hiding stuff to hide on there we go good excellent that's it throw out that gross yuck yuck Woo. yeah so you can't see them as well in the black bins and that's why i'm kind of like the black bins are great for uh, breeding because it's really dark and that's why I would still use these. But what I wouldn't use them for is, I wouldn't use them for uh, if I wanted to like keep an eye on uh, pinheads growing up or hatching. So that's one lesson learned when I do this all over again is I would keep pinheads in all the new like uh, laying tubs and I would put them in, uh, what you call it, I'd put them in clear bins. Now look at all these, look at these. Look at them all man, a lot of crickets man. Got food for a while, it's good nice don't get me wrong i still like every day kind of like want to reconsider it but then i'm like nah it's just too hard i want the what the freedoms right when my time back i'm like i look at this and i'm like look at all that hard work all that hard work has paid off and now i'm about to like throw it away um not so much throw it away i'm making a smart decision for me yeah i don't know and then i'm what i'm going to do is though i am going to separate some of these guys into to like what's going to be my feeder bin they can't go in here these guys are too big so this is one black bin done so where do i put these guys man i'm just thinking 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 I've made my mind these guys are going to go into here and this is going to be my like just massive amalgamated bin and then i'll put my feeders anything in here look at this it's all working out perfectly oh man okay this is the thing with food is they get like stuck in the food and like some of it's moldy so i like, have to be really careful what i pull out how do they you know what here's a question for you how do they um how do they fucking breed them so efficiently in the like the people that like bio like bioactive supplies man the ones that breed them in like in the thousands and they can just like pump out thousands of crickets man. they must have these mad systems and setups man like i'd love to i'd love to be go behind closed doors and do a little tour eh? and you know what I wouldn't even sell. If I learned how to do it, I wouldn't even sell them. I would just like use it for myself. But just like downsize it. I don't need the money for fucking crickets. They got leaked, man. Although he went to the into the cunning sphinx enclosure, he might survive because he's so small. But if he doesn't get out of that, that crate, he's gonna get to an adult size, and then he's gonna um, un, 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 probably meet an ill fate. I know what I gotta do. This, ah, man, I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of this. But basically, I'm gonna transfer them into a big bin, and this bin's gonna be now free. And then my small bins are going to both be consolidated into nothing. So I'm basically just going to have one. That's it. Done. So the other thing I'll do is I'll feed Icky, my leopard geckos, or leopard gecko, should I say. And she's pretty clumsy right now. There we go. It's a mealworm. So I've chucked some in there. Just seeing what she, if she's hungry. She's just gone through a shed. So she's looking gorgeous in regards to her colorations. Looking fresh. She's hungry. I'm always hungry after a fresh shed. Uh, yum, 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 yum. So mealworms are easy, man. Like... If, the, if your geckos or animals eat mealworms, mealworms are definitely one of the easiest foods. They say that should be their staple, which it shouldn't, but you know, a bit clumsy. Still a good option. Extra. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, honestly, man. Leopard gecko is still like one of the most like coolest animals you can keep as a pet, man. Like absolutely gorgeous animal, super friendly, easy to handle. And look at that color. Look at that colorations. They're nocturnal as well. Don't need too much attention. Don't need too much, I suppose. Like they're not, they're low maintenance as a reptile. That's what I'm gonna say. Enjoy, Hickster. It's hot, so I've just come home from work. I've got the rig out. So today, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna... I left, I left this like piece of orange from where because I was like, you know what, the crickets need some food. So I'm just going to give them these three massive chunks because there's th only three tubs now. I'm also going to get out, very important, a uh, blood wound box, which is for my Japanese five million adults. There's one. I'll say he'll smash that. I'll show you guys later how he smashes that. That's it. Let's go out. Let's go and get these in the tub.
And here we go. So the adults, or should I say my feed out, they're gonna get a big piece of orange and a small piece. And that's gonna that's gonna be perfect overnight. Stop them from each other, and this can go into my hatchling, or should I say my mixed blend, and that'll give them enough for tonight. Tomorrow they might get some protein, some dog food. Uh, definitely the blood worms need to frost a bit and it's all bag, so I just leave them out in the warm room temperature. It's the easiest way to get them to defrost. And we'll set that for later. This is Ike, he's an albino morph leopard gecko. This is the first one I've ever had. They, you know, they just appeared out of nowhere at the bottom of the world but here they are and look I got Ike and he's super dope and as you can see he's a little bit different to the wild type he's got yellow he's got light brown he's got caramel so basically an albino genetic or gene in him so he doesn't like you know, he's a bit sensitive to bright lights but he's a, a huge and very welcome addition to my uh, reptile collection so I'm super stoked to have him on board So, you know, it's Tuesday night and I've fed my Japanese fire-bellied newts tonight, some bloodworms, they get a one cube. They're voracious, I only feed them like once every third day. Uh, they're adults, they don't need to eat as often, they don't need to eat every day. I mean, it is getting warmer, but once every like third day is usually pretty good for these guys. They get like a whole cube of bloodworms or maybe like a whole, essentially the equivalent in white worms, but that's it, that's my Tuesday um, routine. What else did I do? I did the misting as per usual. I don't need to show that every time, but I mean, you guys get the hint that I mist my animals every day, they get water. Um, I also fed my leopard geckos tonight, so I gave them some a little bowl of mealworms, as you can see. So, yeah, lots of feeding tonight. Um, I do like, I mean, as, as a reptile keeper goes, I suppose the feeding days are probably the funnest in regards to like, you see the animals eat, really interactive. But I also actually enjoy uh, a bit of husbandry as well, and it's just like misting and a bit of cleaning. Because you can also get up and close and personal with your animals as well in a different way, I suppose. Like, it's not just about feeding and in the cool and exciting stuff and the things that you enjoy um like the more interactive elements but i also enjoy the um even just being in their environment and seeing how they interact with you nearby or cleaning and make sure that they're healthy they're happy they're healthy with the environment sometimes they you can rich from the stimulus but yeah that's um that's my tuesday my tuesday's pretty chill tomorrow's gonna be a whole new routine but we'll see um we'll see i'll show you guys i mean i also get like i said i gave the uh cricket some orange uh tomorrow what i'll do is yeah i'm not sure we'll see we'll see what installs but like i said i don't have like a super regimented and routine i kind of just go with the flow i make sure that i stick to somewhat of a schedule in regards to anyone everyone's fed when they need to be fed everyone's cleaned when they need to be fed make sure water's always available it's not super strict it's not like the same thing on certain days i know that a lot of people probably do that maybe not but no i just kind of enjoy the animals each day as much as i can and enjoy the moment if that makes sense So, you know, sometimes they get home late, but I got home to these two idiots. Oh, well, they're not misbehaving at least, just chilling, basking. Yeah, I mean, it just happens, all right. So I've got three tubs uh, with flies split up. There are only three in there, and I think there's four in there and five in there. It doesn't really matter. This is all for the geckos. The frogs don't really need flies tonight because I've got uh, crickets that I'm going to feed out to the frogs just because, you know, I've got all these crickets now and I might as well save the efforts of the flies and leave the flies for the geckos. So let's do that. But before I do anything, I will do the honey. So it's honey day. So some here for the Ruakawa, some maybe up here. And the reason why I'm doing this first is because last time I did the, oh, there's one little gecko there. Maybe he wants some. Nah. So I put them there, put some of the leaves as I did the um, flies first and then tried to do honey after and you can imagine all the uh, all the flies were getting out whilst I was trying to do honey. So rookie, rookie mistake, don't, don't, don't learn from me. So here we go, I just kind of put it everywhere, make sure there's a bit of honey around so that all the geckos have access to it. And look at that, he's all already all over it. They know, they know when I put the honey in, they can like, I don't know, they either smell it or they see it or they know that I'm doing it, but look at that, all over it straight to it. I only give it to them every two weeks. 
once every uh, you know week and a half I'm trying to replicate wild environment I don't eat honey every day look at that I don't know you can't really see it too well but here he is and I'm licking that little leaf with the honey on it cute and these guys get it as well so I know that there's a forest gecko that comes out here that's his tunnel I'll put some around once again on this branch put some up here just around the enclosure as per usual and now I can add the flies oh man the timing is impeccable I just caught this forest gecko catch one of the flies I just released in earlier Man, he's a quick hunter, man. They uh, make most of the opportunity, I tell you. Look at him. Yeah, you can't really see him too well through the mesh, but you can see, see, he's got his mouth open. He's going to chew it now. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yum, 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 yum. Yeah, he's a good predator, man. Look at him. He's coming out now for the evening and got himself a nice little snack, and there'll be some honey around as well. Yeah, boy. Look at that incredible animal, I tell you. Happy boy. So, you know what I'm doing? I am getting some crickets for the tree frogs so i'm going to get probably about well, like eight to ten of these guys they're getting crickets tonight because i couldn't get them flies sorry the camera's a bit shaky because it's on a fairly unstable platform but i'm going to get some good sized ones in here meaning that good size for the frogs oh my goodness look at them all Whew. all right so what we're doing now is god honestly this is the hard part I'm trying to catch them catch them under pressure uh ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. That is what I want. Oh my god. Yeah, hundreds. Okay, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna have to breed these guys. This is too good. Like the quantity is too good. You know what I mean? Man, quite hard to wrangle, eh? Quite hard to wrangle. Let's keep the lid loose. So I have to get like the medium-sized ones because tree my whistling tree frogs are small. So they need ones. I'll show you guys. Like this size. Small-ish. Three. Probably grab like. I'll probably grab like. Yeah, I should be safe with maybe eight. Let's say eight. So they're getting. You know, it's quite exciting for them because they haven't had crickets in a while. Like this is like a new new prey for them. Five. And this is what I love about having so many fucking crickets, man. Like I'm not. I am not spoiled. Like I'm sorry. I'm the saying is I'm spoiled for choice right now. Like I've got so many. I can just. You know, it's like not an issue. I'm like cool. I'll grab like. Do these tonight boom feed the tree frogs done so how many tree frogs have i got i've got like 15 but they do have some slaters in there because i give them a blend of blend of food so they've got some slaters they've had flies uh, since yesterday i think i chucked in like 10 flies roughly 10 to 12. Uh, you guys will get some food tomorrow because there's oh man i didn't know there's this many crickets in here guys like i am it's like almost out of control like in a good way that makes sense. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, one more for good luck. Done. Done, 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 done. So, we're gonna get these. Eight crickets. I don't know where these guys are. These guys are nocturnal, man. You see heaps. Oh, yeah, there's one up there. Okay, that's all good. There's one up, there's one like up there. I'll show you guys in a sec. Um, sometimes I'll see them on the ground, but that's okay. They're getting uh, crickets. That's it. All right, chuck them all in. That's it, see how we go. So I do have to clean all this up. Like I have to trim all this, man. This thing's getting out of control. Like I love it, don't get me wrong, but it's getting a bit too dense. And the tree frogs are like kind of struggling. See, there's one up there. Um, there's supposed to be like 10 tiny tree frogs in here and I can only see like one and I'm like, are they getting lost? Are they getting lost in the jungle? I'm sure they're not. They've got the little dish now. Don't be worried. You might be thinking what a tiny little dish that is. These guys aren't great swimmers, so they don't, need a huge they just need a small pool of water i'm not planning to breed this i'm not planning to breed this colony so i'm leaving them as they are for now um in regards to just a short dish sorry shallow dish oh yeah there's one down there as well okay they're around that's good i can see i can see like three to four now so they're gonna come out we've got the crickets Give them talk good night but chill wednesday night just crickets crickets and bit of gecko that's it all right stay tuned for the next one a bit of a pov evening today Well, I won't have to do any misting today because it's raining. Excellent. So it is fish feeding day. So we're gonna give them some white worms. Yep. Into their little and straight in there. And they're all ready for it. Let's see. As they drop through, gobies are ready for it. Oh, there we go, look at that. Here everyone's keen, look at that. Love their fresh food, man, or their live food, should I say.
So you know what I'm doing? I am trimming all of this. Yep, this is just getting out of control. It looks great, but it's going to the point where the frogs literally have like nowhere to go. It's like growing on the glass. I can barely see inside and I'm like, yeah, it's great to a point, but you know, like a lawn, you got to look after this, man. You got to maintain because it just gets out of control. And I'm like, I swear it's suffocating the frogs. I don't even like, are they up here? Who knows? So I kind of, it's, it's because they're this branch here across here was like their basking branch. And now I'm like, they don't even have access to it. So I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. So they have just a bit more visibility and access to things. There's one up here. I don't want to disturb him too much, but he's probably like, yeah, boy, about time, man. You know, it's like about time you mow the lawns, so to speak. There we go. Look at that. And this thing, like under an, under this LED jungle dawn bulb, this shit will just grow back in weeks, man. So this is my Thursday night. Nice relaxation. There's some music in the background, you know, just enjoying the vibes of trimming. I feel like this is what, you know, old people do in their gardening. This is the same amount of, like, so... It's so satisfying, you know what I mean? Here we go, look at that. It really looks a million times better. I can actually see things, but we're not done yet. More work to do. What the other thing this has done actually is it's actually exposed. I want to keep these side vines, just trim them up a little bit. You want to keep that stuff there because it kind of gives them access to climb along here and hide. But I'm just thinking the top, a eh? The top stuff that I'm more interesting, more interested in just to get a bit more access to so the lighting actually comes through because right now it's just all in that corner. I'm just making sure that I'm cutting the right things and who knows how many frogs i'll uh, i'll discover in all of this i've already seen one. Oh, that's a oh my god it's a spider web okay spider living in here why is there not been eaten who knows um let's have a look is there anything under here sometimes through this process i'll find frogs that are like hiding at this stage nothing what's under here anything nope all right all good oh man I'll tell you what life of a frog owner in a bioactive environment nah it's got like epic just means that it's like a reset then like as much as they like you know they've still got access to all the stuff in the background to hide under they've got these logs in the back maybe i'll put another one here well actually to be fair plant should go there but i'm kind of letting the light and the misting system grow the moss here so that's what i've left that for the stage oh, there we go there's a frog okay i'll get him out so i've trimmed it up i've kind of made it a lot more cleaner there's not much down the bottom because i want to see how many frogs come out tonight so what i'll do is i'll turn the lighting system off and i want to see who comes out and when, and then I'll know exactly how many frogs I have in here, I suppose, maybe. Maybe I'll just spot like five, six, eight, three, one, who knows, but we'll come back later. So it's mealworm day, and I see they're really pecked at it because there was a lot more mealworms in there, and they're all here for it. Look, yeah, there he is. He's like, yeah, boy, I had breakfast, ready for a big day of basking and doing nothing. You know what I'm doing? I am looking, I'm trying to get out all the frogs I can because I think I've got to clear this out. I've had a bit of an issue with this this epic paludarium that I have growing super well. But unfortunately, a few of the frogs have perished lately. And the thing with frogs, if you've ever kept frogs, whether in large numbers or small numbers, is when they start, you know, if you breed tree frogs or breed frogs, you're going to lose like a few of the froglets because Honestly, you look at a froglet and it, they just die because they die of this die of a little heart attack because you, you looked at them the wrong way. Um, so they're really fragile, they're real sensitive, they need like good conditions. And then sometimes you have weird frogs that like can thrive and survive through anything. But I've got adult tree frogs in here and they, a couple, a few of them have perished lately in, in very, I suppose, short increments of time, uh, increments of each other. And that basically means that something's going on in here, whether it's in a bacterial infection or it's something else i need to get them all out and i need to separate them so there's either something in the enclosure or there's one of the frogs has gotten sick and they've spread it or it could just be a it could just be one of those things where it's just random where four or five of them have died off they are like some of them are getting older they only live for like four to five years um that could be part of it but also you just be you got to be super careful and cautious so i need to separate all the healthy ones and just keep an eye on them in a separate enclosure i'm kind of like quarantine or maybe it's just having a visual health check. Basically, I'm getting them out and I'm just looking at them all together in a tub and just seeing if any look like unwell, if any of them look weak, skinny, they're not eating. Um, they should be plump little guys. So that's the main thing is like these tree frogs should be like plump little round chubby little things. So that's what I'm doing today. You know, it's a public holiday. 
So I've got a lot of the day to kind of tend my animals and this is what I thought a good thing to do today is to get some time for me to get stuck into this, especially lately. I was either going to, I either had to do it tonight, late at night and spend a couple of hours on it, or I can do it today during the day and maybe a bit more later as well, because it's not going to be simple. I'm probably going to have to like remove a lot more of this vegetation just to get through, but they're nocturnal, so I kind of have to dig around and look for them and half the time I can't even find half of them because they're really good at hiding. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Today. This is the first one that I got out. Now this is what I want to see. I want to see them nice and alert, active. He's sitting on the side, meaning that he's acting like a frog basically. He's just in here with some spatter moss. Oh god, he's made a mess, but it's damp, so just this is where I'm keeping them temporarily while I observe them all. But this is a whistling tree frog, and he's looking good. Probably needs a bit of food. So I might put in some crickets, little baby crickets in there with him, and just see uh see how he goes. Let's do that now actually. Generally, that's what I want to see. I want to see a frog that's alert. I want to see a frog that wants to eat. So this is a healthy frog. So I'll keep him separate for a couple of days or at least a day just to keep an eye on him. And once I get more out, then I'll kind of split them up in these small tubs. That's what you want to see. Generally, the first sign is frogs that are skinny and don't want to eat. They're not interested in the food. So that's the first sign. And look, I'm not allowed to eat frog deteriorate really quickly. So don't feel bad if a frog like literally just doesn't eat and then one day he's just they're skinny and then they don't want to eat and they just die the next day frogs are just sensitive creatures they really are like you know you can't really do too much about it they because of them being amphibians like they're super sensitive with their skin so they absorb everything through their skin and it's very hard for them to recover so to speak so pets can't do too much especially if it's like a fungus or an infection fortunately all you can do is quarantine separate them from the healthy animals sorry separate them from the sick animals and then you basically uh yeah, listen. Yeah, he's active. He's like, come on, man. But anyway, that's all you can do. So, just keep going. So with a lot of these nocturnal animals, the exciting stuff happens at night. So we'll come back later tonight and we'll see what comes out maybe one frog maybe 10 frogs we'll see but i gotta separate them regardless it's just finished raining and these guys are out and about already look at that yeah he's like sun's out guns out boy man he's looking chunky eh? he's had a few flies man a few flies good on you I'm giving one of my morph leopard geckos a little a soak just just at foot level because he's got some sh like skin stuck in the, his toes and that's what you do when you uh want to help them with their shed and today is saturday it's terrible man it's such bad weather so you know what we're gonna clean this out we're gonna like i said continue the process of getting the frogs out we've been okay in the tub overnight i need the bulk of it today need my scissors what am I doing? First things first, I'm going to trim all of this. So I'm going to trim all of this first and get as much, uh, tidy it up as much as I can because I actually need to find the fox. Isn't that funny? So I'm going to do this. And all this is just fine, man. So I'll give the, the gecko a 10 minute soak while, while I'm here. Just get his toes nice and, because uh, you want the skin around the heel. Bring up for a close up. He's actually having a drink at the same time, which is quite nice, but here he is. This is his old Ike. More flippant gecko. Beauty pie. He's going to get a nice soak. He's going to heat up a little bit. He's going to be able to have a drink, a good drink as well. And the other benefit is it's going to soften up that skin around his toes um, so that I can actually gently pull it off or maybe it'll just come off on its own. But you have to be careful because it actually cuts off circulation to their feet. I saw some crickets at the top, man. So yeah, I don't know if you can see behind me too much, but it's absolutely belting down pouting down can't hear it too much yeah oh, man this is dense man this is dense jungle man definitely needs to throw man there's spider webs god are the frogs even eating anything anyway montage man you should have seen it before man this was like fully covered now i'm kind of getting to the oh i just need to look don't get me wrong it looks dope but it's just too dense guys it grows back anyway so quick it's like it's like ivy man so i just want to really get it to the their skins really obviously being gentle I'm using these scissors. Scissors, scissors. Oh my god, look at that. Jesus 